everyone. I am so glad that you're here with me today. I have the best story. It's better than a Disney movie because it's true, but it has superheroes and villains and uh, everything in it, queens and kings. Well, God's people, you probably already know, in Bible times were called Jews or Jewish. Well, we've talked about some of the things that they would do. They would have festivals, they'd have sacrifices, things that they followed God's laws in the Old Testament. Well, many of them are still celebrated by Jewish people today, but one of the most fun ones is called Purim. Well, it's a party or a carnival that celebrates a hero in our Bible that we're going to learn about today. Her name is Esther. Well, one of the fun parts of the celebration is that they tell her story and you use a grogger, which is like a noisemaker, every time you hear the villain's name in the story. That's right, this one has a villain. The villain's name is Haman. So every time you hear me say Haman, you shake your noisemaker. Well, you could use an empty canister. I used an empty Play-Doh container and put a few objects in it like beans or rice. And so every time you hear it, shake it. If you don't have a noisemaker, you can stomp your feet when you hear it. Well, the book of Esther tells us the whole story. First, there was a king named Xerxes. Well, kings were very powerful back then and everyone had to obey exactly what they, would, uh, they said or they'd be punished or even killed. Well, King Xerxes was married when we first begin the book and he called his wife, um, Queen Vashi, one time to come to a group uh, to, show, to show off in front of a group of friends he had. And she thought he was just being kind of silly and she refused to come. King Xerxes was very mad. And he asked once some of his officials what should be done to Queen Vashi. Well, they told him to take away her crown and tell her she could never come back to see him. But, and he did all of that. But when he stopped being so angry, he kind of missed her. And so the officials set out to find him another queen. They looked all over the land to find the most beautiful young ladies for the king. And they brought them to the palace to live for a year. Well, these ladies did not actually get to choose whether they wanted to come or not. They were basically captured, but they were treated well. They were taught for a year how to be a queen. They had servants and beautiful clothes and makeup and perfumes, and the king was going to choose one of them to be his queen. He really liked one particular girl. Her name was Esther. Now, Esther's mother and father had died when she was really little, and her cousin Mordecai had raised her, but he taught her to love God, and she was a Jewish person too. Well, King Xerxes fell in love with Esther and made her the queen, and he didn't know that she was Jewish though. Her cousin Mordecai had told her not to tell anyone in the palace to begin with, because sometimes Jewish people were not treated very well there. Well, King Xerxes had a big feast and, and gave her the crown, and Mordecai, though, was near the king's palace one day when he heard two people talking about hurting King Xerxes. Mordecai tried to do the right thing, and he told Queen Esther what they had said. The king's officials were able to catch the two bad guys before they could do anything bad. Mordecai may have just saved King Xerxes' life, and King Xerxes didn't even know it had happened. Remember, King Xerxes had basically captured Esther and took her away from her home, but Mordecai and Esther still worked to help them. They did the right thing. Well, meanwhile, King Xerxes had promoted Haman. Did you remember to shake the noisemaker or stomp your feet when you heard it? Well, I might not, but we'll try. Haman was the second most important person in the nation after the king. Everyone bowed down to Haman because he was so important and listened to what he said. Well, almost everyone. Mordecai did not. He refused to bow down to anyone other than God. That's what we're told in the Bible. Well, Haman did not find this amusing. He kind of went crazy. He was so mad at Mordecai that he decided to teach him a lesson. Haman decided to kill all the Jews, not just Mordecai. This is why we call him the villain in the story. He didn't want to be blamed for it, though, so he made up an evil plan, and he tricked King Xerxes. He told the king that there was this whole group of people in his land that had different laws and followed different rules, and they didn't even pay attention to the king's laws very much. He was talking about the Jewish people because they obeyed God. 
but he made it sound so horrible and he tried to convince King Xerxes that he should not tolerate that kind of behavior. He suggested that the king make a decree. A decree is kind of like a big announcement or a new law from the king saying that this entire group of people should be destroyed and he set a date um, for this to happen. Can you believe this? Haman is so mean he would have people killed just because he didn't like Mordecai. King Xerxes falls for this insane plan. He uses his ring to sign the decree. That's what kings did. They would have a special ring and when they sent out a law, they would um, dip the ring in something kind of like wax and seal it. And so people really knew it was from the king and, and knew to trust it. Well, stay with me. We are only in chapter four of Esther now. Mordecai heard about the king's decree and he knew that many others were in danger along with himself. And he was very upset. Sometimes people back then would tear their clothes and wear sackcloth when they were upset. The Jewish people did this and began to fast and pray to God. When someone fasts, that means they stop eating and they spend their time praying instead and really trying to get an answer. Well, Mordecai dressed in the sackcloth and went to the, uh, to the king's gate, hoping to speak to Esther. And Esther had heard about the king's decree and she was of course scared too. That meant she was going to be killed if anybody found out she was Jewish. So she and Mordecai talked back and forth through a servant had to go back and forth between them. And he told her that she should go and approach the king. But she was not allowed to do this. She would have been killed. She was queen, but she did not have any special powers. Well, Mordecai did not want Esther to be afraid. He wanted her to be brave. And he told her that this might be the reason that he, she was even in the palace right now for this special purpose. Well, she wasn't convinced yet, but Mordecai said, God will find another way to save his people. But he wanted Esther to be that way, that she might be there to save the people. Well, Morde uh, Mordecai has to go away a little for a little while. Esther tells him that she wants to pray about it and she asks him to gather some other people and for them to fast and pray for three days and that she would make her decision. Well, on the third day, Esther had her decision. She got dressed up and stood near the king's court. This was incredibly brave. She could have been killed just for showing up there. I know that's crazy, but it's true. King Xerxes saw her waiting for him and he reached out his scepter, like a big, just, um, maybe gold or silver um, stick. But that was a sign that she could go in and speak to him. Whew, she made it. In chapter five, verse three, King Xerxes asks Esther what she wants and promises that she could have anything. Remember, Esther wanted him to stop that decree before any of the Jewish people were killed, but she didn't ask that. She had been given a better plan by God when she prayed. She told him what she really, really wanted was for the king to come to a special feast to honor him and Haman. You believe this, the man who had this plan? She prepared this great feast and Haman, was so honored to be included. At the meal, King Xerxes asks her again what her wish was. And he basically told her she could have anything that she wanted up to half of his kingdom. What a great opportunity. She didn't want his kingdom. She just wanted to save the Jewish people. Well, the king would probably do that if she asked, right? Nope, Esther didn't ask for it. She said that what she really, really, really wanted was for the king and Haman to come to another feast the next evening. What was she thinking? Well, Haman was so proud of himself because he was the only one invited to the special party for the second night in a row. He knew he must be really important and special. He was in such a great mood as he left the palace, but he saw Mordecai and he just became consumed with anger. Just seeing Mordecai made him furious. He got home and he called over some friends and he told his wife and friends how incredible the party was, bragging about how important he must be. But then he started talking about Mordecai and he needed ideas on what to do with him. Well, his wife, Zeresh, made a great villain's wife. 
she came up with a crazy plan too. She told Haman to build gallows to have uh, Mordecai hung and killed in front of everyone. This is awful. But Haman goes to bed planning this to do this the next day. But that night in the palace, King Xerxes has trouble sleeping. Has that ever happened to you? He asked for um, a, a friend to come and read some from a special book. Does mom or dad ever read like a bedtime story to kind of help you get to sleep? Well, King Xerxes was a grown up, but he needed this too. Well, people in the palace would write down special events and good deeds in this book for kings. And he hadn't read it in a while. I guess he had been busy. And so he asked someone to read just a little bit of it so he could get to sleep. Well, the person read about the story of how Mordecai had saved his life, read all the details about how he had overheard the two bad guys and told the queen. In Esther 6, 3, we hear that King Xerxes asked what, a special, what special honors were given to Mordecai for doing something so amazing. The servants didn't know that anything had been done. The next morning, Haman, not knowing any of this, comes to see the king and waited outside his court. He was so excited about telling him this plan to kill Mordecai. But things did not go exactly as he planned. The king called him into the court and asked him to come up with this fantastic idea to honor someone very special. Well, Haman was such a prideful man. He was sure that the king wanted to honor him. And so he was thinking it was all going to be for him. He came up with a grand plan. He said to bring royal robes to this person and the crown and let him ride on the royal horse through the town and have somebody lead him and shouting out that this is the man that the king wants to honor. This was Haman's dream. Well, this incredible dream turned into his worst nightmare because the king thought the plan was so great. He said, Haman... Arrange all of this and honor Mordecai. Haman had to be the man to bring the robes and the crown and walk Mordecai through the city, announcing that Mordecai was the king, uh, one that the king was honoring. I love it. God is the only perfect judge. He knew Haman's heart and he found the perfect punishment for his plan so far. Well, Haman survived it and he had Queen Esther's party to look forward to that evening. During the meal, the king asked Queen Esther again what she wished for, but this time Esther had a different answer. In Esther 7, 3 through 10, we find out God's plan. Esther says to the king, if it pleases you, then I ask for my life and the lives of my people because someone has planned to kill us. The king is horrified and says, who dares to do this? The queen answers, wicked Haman, and tells him all about this evil plan. The king has Haman carried away to the gallows and ha that Haman had built for Mordecai. King Xerxes realized his mistake and he put Mordecai in charge and even gave him his signet ring so that Mordecai could issue a new decree, making sure that the Jewish people were safe. And that's the reason for the holiday. They celebrate this special occasion. But this, and this is Purim. But this, as the story spread about what had happened, more and more people believed in God. Isn't that a fantastic ending? Well, God protected Esther and Mordecai. They were faithful to him. They fasted and prayed to get God's answer to the problem, and God gave them the perfect plan. Many people came to know God, and this changed their lives as well. God has a way of doing that, turning evil plans into good. He does that every day, even now. So when you have a big problem, you just need to ask God for the answer. His way is always the best way. He loves us so much, and he wants the best from us, for us. Sometimes we have to go through things that are really hard, and we naturally get scared like Esther did at first, but remember she prayed and trusted just like our other heroes of the Bible did. We get to read about them so that our faith grows and strengthens. God used an ordinary young woman to do something extraordinary. 
I know God has plans like that for you too. You just have to be ready. Mordecai was right when he told Esther that God would find another way to save his people, but he just wanted Esther to trust God enough to be that superhero. When you love Jesus, he gives you a gift. And think about it like a wrapped present, even though it's not handed to you that way. You don't know what's inside that wrapped present until you open it. But Jesus gives you your special talents and your purpose in that pretend box. But we have to unwrap it. And, by, and that just means we have to pray and ask God for, that, for him to show it to us. God was, will always show it to you because that's what he wants you to do, your special purpose for your life. He certainly did that for Esther, didn't he? Pray this week that you can find your superpower and that you are ready to use it. Hope you have a wonderful week and I hope you always remember that Jesus loves you more than you can imagine.